in some way has its origins during the time of these fairs. Find truth, all you can do is find false, drop it and get rid of it, and eventually when you can't get rid of any more false, what you're left with is the truth. How much false can you find? Because there's lots in history. And I was looking around the internet and came across the images of the 1893 Chicago World Exposition. And it blew my mind because it looked like ancient Rome in the middle of downtown Chicago. And as I looked at it further, well, here's another one in Philadelphia. Here's another one in St. Louis, in Buffalo, in San Francisco. And then as soon as they were done, they tore them all down and threw them in the garbage. That just told me there's something wrong with all of these. The story of the expositions is, is a gigantic lie. And I think it's so huge of a lie because I think they're right at a bridge point when so many things about the 1800s that seem strange and weird, right as this sort of period ends of unbelievable strangeness, and all of a sudden these fairs spring up all over the world with impossible buildings, buildings we're talking about, which are colossal structures. Chicago built 700 acres up there in supposedly less than two years. St. Louis built 1,200 acres of exposition buildings. One of the buildings in Chicago, the manufacturer's building, would house 300,000 people. There's a giant statue in the middle of the lagoon. It was called the Golden Lady, and it was known as the Statue of the Republic. It was 65 feet tall. They say it was covered in gold leaf that had copper underneath, but others speculate it was actually made out of solid gold. So you're talking 65 foot high, potentially solid gold statue. We're talking giant structures and looking like ancient Rome with towers and domes and columns and the most fine, ornate pieces to them in these record, unbelievable times, then as soon as they're done, chuck them in the garbage. Like Jackson Park is a swamp, so supposedly they had to drive down tens of thousands of wooden stakes in order to support the weight of everything. They dug out massive lagoons, lakes. They had a canal system that ran through the entire exposition. They also had an above-ground electric train. An electric train, well, where's the electricity coming from? It's running around the park. They had a moving walkway down by the shore. Not enough people are asking, where does this technology come from? Just to frame it, if I'm not mistaken, the Chicago Fair was the first time people had seen electric light. Tesla's the one who got the uh, electricity contract for the Chicago Exposition. And it was certainly more than all of the lights anyway that were in New York City at the time were at the Chicago Exposition. Now, it must have been mind-blowing for most of those people who had only seen gaslight or candlelight at night to see that city lit up in such a way. Again, Count Boyce, 1901, we are told, whether it's true or not, the idea of being able to electrically do anything hasn't been around that long. And this fair is bizarre. This is supposed to be Tesla's fair, where he managed to somehow move electricity from Niagara Falls to Buffalo for the fair. No one's really explained how he actually did that. Uh, and at the middle of the fair is a 395 foot high electrical tower on top of which of course is a female golden statue called the goddess of light that this thing was lit up by some suggest half a million electric light bulbs again when you look at the photos of this thing it's just where do they really get the power from i mean think of what it would take today if you had a place with no electricity and no way to pipe it in the generators that would have to be built for example, there's a building that went up for the Barcelona Exposition in 1888. It was claimed to be the fastest built building in the world, 5,000 square meters, capacity for 2,000 guests, 600 rooms, 30 apartments, and it was supposed to be built in 53 days. This is supposed to be a time of horse and buggy. The two-year building times are actually impossible unless the two most likely theories would be either A, they had a technology that they're not supposed to have, and it really was built in that time frame. Even if they built them, they had to build them out of marble and stone in record time, or the buildings were already there. They'd been there for hundreds or thousands of years, fixed up, refurbished, repainted, hence the term whitewashed, which is the term that was used for the Chicago Exposition, which was paint all the buildings with this brand new spray paint that they had just developed to spray paint all the buildings in record time so you couldn't tell if anything was old or anything was new. How long did these things tend to stay open? When they built these things, supposedly over two years, which is the narrative, how long were they there for oh, six, open months. six months for the public to come? And then what was amazing, for example, in St. Louis, two days after the fair ended, they brought in a demolition team from Chicago with explosives and blew the thing up. They actually used dynamite to blow it up, and they say through it in landfills. The things like the World Fair shows there was a time in our past, and even not that far in our past, where humans seemed to be at a completely higher level. Human living and human knowledge were 
constructed into the buildings using cymatics, using sacred geometry. These fairs, they're so important to study because the history that we know right now as history was invented at the time these fairs were going on. One of their underlying nefarious purposes was to teach a historical narrative to the population that they were supposed to believe and agree with. And scarily, the world we're walking into today is in some way has its origins during the time of these fairs. Find truth. All you can do 